Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and I thought I'd walk you through my way of doing HDR Pro in Photoshop CS5 but actually starting with Lightroom 3. Why? Because that's where my images live. When I import my images from my camera, I import them into Lightroom. However, Lightroom doesn't do HDR. Photoshop does. So let's take a look at the workflow. Here I am in Lightroom 3, and I have, I'm actually, I'm still in the public beta. And what I have here are three images that I shot with a bracketed exposure using my Nikon D5000. So whether it's three images, five images, eight images, however many you captured, you can select those images in Lightroom. And then when you do a right click, if you have Photoshop CS5 installed, it will actually give you the option to merge to HDR Pro right from Lightroom. So when I do this, this will go ahead and launch those images into Photoshop CS5. So it's bringing them all in. Again, these are raw images, high res, high quality. So it's going to take a few minutes not only to open up those raw files, but then to merge them into to the HDR Pro interface. So we'll just let that happen. And in a few moments, I'll have the HDR Pro dialog box where we can take it a little bit further. Now, I've got the dialog box up, but the problem with the dialog is that, well, it's giving me an HDR image. It, it's done its task. It's composited the images together. Now, at this point, if I want to do any special effects, that's where I actually go in to give it that HDR look, and that's what we're aiming for. So, if I was not shooting on a tripod, I would probably go ahead and remove the ghost anyway, even though I don't really see a lot of ghosting. But I didn't shoot this on a tripod, so I'll go ahead and take care of that right now. The next thing is, I would go in now and start working with the settings. Now, Photoshop gives you some presets, and these presets are okay. But I, you know, I've actually worked with my buddy over at NAP, Scott Kelby, and he gave me a great formula for creating that HDR look that's so popular. So let's start right at the top. Let's change our radius to 176. Let's change our strength to 0.47. Let's change our gamma to 0.76. Let's change our exposure to 0.30. Let's change our detail, and this is what's going to give it that crunchy, high-res, detailed look from 30 to 300. Now let's go ahead and change the shadow to negative 100. And again, the highlight also to negative 100. And what we're going to do here is then uh, crank up the vibrance to 22 and the saturation to 26. Now, again, this is a formula that may or may not work on every single image you do. But it's giving me the look and feel that I want. And you may go in and tweak it. For example, you may say that the, the exposure is too dark. And you may go in and crank up the exposure a little bit more or a little bit less. So don't look at this as the golden rule. It's you know, In other words, this only works... Uh, or this won't only work on particular images. You can go in and tweak it if it doesn't look the way you want it to look. Now, the last thing we'll do is we'll head over to Curves. And in Curves, we're just going to give it kind of a look of an S curve. So we're just going to go ahead and plot three points and just kind of bend it to make it look more like an S. And again, you know, for your image, you may want to crank up the shadows a little bit more or you want to bring up the highlights or bring down the highlights a little bit more. So again, this is not a law. This is just kind of recommended starting points. So you can go in and tweak the midtone shadows and highlights until you get it looking right on your image. Now that I've got it the way I want, I'll go ahead and click OK. And of course, that will render out the final HDR file. Now again, it's rendering it in Photoshop and it's going to composite those three images together, giving me my final HDR. But I want it to return to Lightroom. So as soon as this dialog box or this uh, progress bar is passed, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so now we're in Photoshop and here comes my final image. It's converting it to an HDR image. And again, we'll give that progress bar a few seconds to do that. And here we are. So that's what we did inside of Photoshop. Now, all I have to do is hit save at this point. The minute I save this, I could close it and go back to Lightroom and it will be all set. But there's one more thing I, I see that I want to fix real quick. I'm going to grab my lasso tool and there's this little tree sticking out here on the left hand or right hand side that will just go ahead and select that, 
hit the delete key and use the good old content aware fill to take that out now you could have done that ahead of time but then you would have had to do it for each image this way i'm doing it to the final hdr so content aware fill takes care of that tree for me we'll hit save one more time close the image head back over to lightroom and voila there it is i've got it already in lightroom so that's the handoff between photoshop and lightroom they work hand in hand together but we're not quite done yet let's head over to the develop module with this and there's a little bit more tweaking we can do with this so even though we did vibrance and, and clarity or vibrance inside of uh inside of hdr we can crank up the clarity just to give it a little bit more detail and crank up the vibrance just a little bit more and again your little bit more and my little bit more may be different so you can go in and tweak these to your liking last but not least we'll go ahead and just add a little vignetting you can either do it with the lens um, the lens correction or you can do it with the post crop vignetting uh, scott tended to prefer the lens correction but again if you're going to do any cropping it's probably best to do it with the post crop vignetting so that's it you have the complete workflow the workflow going from Lightroom to Photoshop to do HDR Pro and then back to Lightroom again. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.